The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams, and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas! Hello, Thomas! Hello, everybody! Welcome to the island of Sodor! Springtime had come to the island of Sodor. Bertie the bus always looked forward to this time of year. Colorful flowers and green pastures decorated his route alongside Thomas's branch line and made his work a pleasure. While the countryside was beautiful, the roads were not. Over the years, the roads had been worn down by the cars, lorries, and buses, and the transportation ministry had decided it was time for the roads to be repaved. This meant that there would be a lot of road work along the countryside bus routes, and with road work came detours and substantial delays. Sir Topham Hatt had modified the railway timetables to accommodate for these changes, but the unpredictability of the delays made it quite a headache, especially for Bertie, who was used to being as regular as clockwork and right on time. One day, Thomas the tank engine was waiting at the station to take Bertie's passengers to the junction. He was in a very foul mood. Bertie's been late too many times this week, he said. If he wants to gallivant around the countryside all afternoon, then I'm going to let him make the connections himself. It's not so bad, said his driver. Don't be impatient, Thomas. But Thomas was impatient. He didn't like having to wait. Finally, Bertie rolled into the yard, red in the face. He took a moment to catch his breath as the passengers made their way to Annie and Clarabelle. I'm sorry, Thomas, he said. I was held up at the crossroads by the work crews. Just be glad that I'm a guaranteed connection, grumbled Thomas. Next time, I might leave you behind. And without another word, Thomas puffed out of the station, leaving a hurt Bertie behind. The next day, Bertie kept thinking about what Thomas had said. He wouldn't leave me behind, he thought to himself. Thomas would never strand his passengers. Then, Bertie was horrified to see a long line of traffic just ahead. Oh no, we're surely to be late now, Bertie groaned. All the while, Bertie kept mulling over Thomas's words. The traffic moved very slowly. As the line became shorter, Bertie realized they weren't behind a work crew. They were behind a level crossing. And halfway through the crossing sat Thomas. Thomas? Bertie cried. What are you doing here? My cylinders are leaking, Thomas said sadly. My driver and fireman didn't notice until I was almost out of steam. Now I'm stranded here. Bertie knew that Thomas was the guaranteed connection for his passengers again today. If Thomas couldn't travel the rest of the way, then what would happen to his passengers? Then, Bertie knew what he had to do. If you're stranded, Thomas, then I can make the connection to the junction. Thomas smiled. Do you mean it, Bertie? Yes. Why call and wait for another engine when I can drive the rest of the way? It will take a little longer than it would by rail, but it can be done. Thomas and Bertie's crews agreed, and Bertie began his journey to the junction. The work crews passed him through, and he made the trip in record time. The passengers were very impressed with Bertie, and all said, thank you. That evening, Bertie came to see Thomas at the works. 
Thank you for helping an engine out, said Thomas. I'm not sure why you did it when I was so rude to you yesterday. We've got to work together to keep the branch line running, no matter if there are delays or not. You're right about that, Thomas smiled. Soon, the roads were repaired and Thomas returned to the branch line. Thomas didn't complain about delays anymore because he knew that Bertie was the most dependable bus on the island.